one of her names, popular names, is Durga. And Durga, if you do the etymology of Durga, Durga comes from Durg, that is fortress. And you would all the ra Rajas and all the Rajputs and all the you know, kings lived in the fortresses. And we are told that she is the one who is impenetrable. She is the one who can never be defeated. So they, she may have been a patron goddess of the Kshatriya clan. And therefore, we find that the richer people, the, the Kshatriyas, may have wanted her. And we know that before they went into battle, they would have an animal sacrifice. So this myth brings in animal sacrifice, this myth brings in the idea that we have to let the bad out of our mind, this brings in so much of history which we don't want to leave behind, but we have beautified it. We have not allowed that kind of rawness to stay in the myth, and so we don't hear today that she would get drunk. We do not hear today, in fact, there were people who were very unhappy when somebody pointed out that after all your Durga uh, drinks wine regularly and gets intoxicated and there was a whole human cry among the RSS and among other, you know, some other political parties saying that, how can you say that our God is being like that? It's like, uh, you, you know, we've done a whole lot of um, defanging of the goddess when we say that she does that and people don't believe it. But you go back to the scriptures and you'll find in the scriptures all the details are there. You know, she's a meat-eating goddess. She's a, she's a wine-coughing goddess. She's one who roars and yells and screams in delight when she's killing. She, one, one, she's feeling wonderful once she's decapitated Mahisha. So there are many things that, you know, uh, go opposite to the nature of what a woman also represents. And it's completely uh, baffling that how can a, a society like Hindu society be so patriarchal and at the same time have a goddess like Devi Mahatma, like, like Maisha Sudhmarbani. And mind you, most of the books that come out on the goddess, she's like the archetypal goddess. She's the archetypal image of the goddess. So where you'll find so many books, they'll be talking about all kinds of goddesses, but they will always have the figure of, of uh, Mahisha Sudhmarbani on top. She can be seen as Simha Vahini, that is just seated on her Vahan, that is her vehicle, that is the lion or the tiger. It just has to be a leonine creature. It can even be a tomcat. And then you could see her, or you can see her actually in the battle with Mahisha. So either way, you can see uh, her on the top, on the cover of books. It's like, uh, it, I think it's just so much of pride that we have a goddess who represents warrior, war, and who is a warrior goddess. And I think that is a marvelous, marvelous thing to have because, and I don't like it when people have people say that, oh, all the goddesses are one after all, and this is just an aspect of, I know I don't think so. I think the goddesses are very discreet, very different. It's not just a mood. Her mood is just a warfare. If you look at her, she's not there to nurture in this aspect at all. She's there just to fight and to show she has the right tactics and she has the right way of going into war. And she's teaching us those, those ways. And eventually what she does is she bounces on top of the buffalo. And she, you know, like I said, cleans, puts her knee on his uh, neck and bends it down. So we, we hear about the strategies. We hear about, you know, how she uses the weapons. We hear about how she uh, is, is very calm as she's fighting. We also hear this, and you'll see this in the images, that she's supposed to be a very benevolent me, and she's supposed to be very beautiful. She's not supposed to be showing any strain, even as she is killing. So all these things are absolutely magnificent. And I basically feel that it's so marvelous, even if in a changed manner, that we can see the goddess even today. Every year she comes on. The Devi Mahatmaya is heard in all Bengali households, Uriya households, because she's mainly in the eastern part of India, but basically all over. We, are, we, we were told that Mysore also comes from Mahishasur. So even in the south, you have the worship of the goddess and Mahisha. And having said that, I believe there's a whole set of people who worship Mahisha and look at him as their deity and look at him as the lower caste person and Durga and Mahisha Surmardini as a higher caste person. And so the lower OBC section, there are people who don't like the fact that she's fighting him. And the uh, only thing I'd like to say is how would you like to be named and have an epithet that she who killed so-and-so, that be your name? Because that is her name, Mahisha Surmardini. Martin, she who killed Mahisha, that is her name in, in the stock that I chose to use because that is such an epithet which is email, Im, immediately it makes you, it, it's, a, it, it's full of meaning. It gives you uh, the whole, entire mythology, the entire myth as you see her through her name itself. The moment you say Mahisha Sumar. So um, 
I would like to go on and on. It's, it's something that I would like to do very much since, since I like talking about Mahisha Surmadhani so much, but I would like to first show you some slides and we can take the questions later. So I'm just gonna quickly just go to the uh, slideshow in a minute, uh, just one minute. Uh, um, uh, sorry, share screen. Um, so, so, so. Can we all see? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, some of them are a little small, sorry, sorry, but uh, and there are many of them. So I'm gonna go a little fast, but this is like the first one that we hear about from first century BC. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, put uh, that it will show the whole uh, the whole screen. Put okay. The near the the thing to show because here we are seeing. No. Yeah. No. Uh, uh, okay. 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 On the uh, lower left. Go down to, with your cur with your arrow, and is the third thing. Continue. No, to the left. Okay. Um. Uh, is it okay? Is it okay? No, is it too small? No, here is better. Yes. Yeah. It's better. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. This is just a small one. Um, sorry. Please. Yes. So this is just a really small plaque. And you know, the, it was believed by historians that you don't see the goddess before the Gupta period, which is around fourth century. But now you can see this is first century BC. You already see the goddess there holding on from the one, uh, her left hand is, you know, pressing down the, the goddess and I mean the, the Mahisha, the buffalo, and you don't see any image of, you know, the mouth coming out from the mouth, the man emerging like you'll see later on. So uh, this is the first one. And then we come to the second one. Now this is the very, you know, you can't see it properly. It's a terracotta plaque, but again, you can see the goddess and there again, the buffalo form. In the earlier images, you don't see the uh, Mahisha as anthropomorphic, that is he's not seen as a male, as a man. Here a little clearly, you can see a little better that there's the demon, uh, the, the buffalo, and from the buffalo's mouth, the, the neck, the decapitated neck, the man is coming out. And as you can see on the back, she is pressing it down and she's putting in her there, uh, uh, tissue inside him. Uh, here I'm going to show you right here where I stay in Delhi. This is right in front of my house in October. Every month you see Mahisha Sur Mardani coming. It's basically, she's called Durga, but this is in a Mahisha Sur Mardani form with many hands, uh, with a, a minimum of 10 hands, the Sabuchadhari. And here he is, green, bilious green, the Mahisha. And it's very interesting, you know, the, her lion is the Vahan, is a vehicle. It's very interesting that the demon changes from time to time. I'm told when Jap Japan, during World War II, the, the demon looked like a Japanese, and I at that time in the 19 uh, late early 1950s, and I'm told that recently he also resembled Osama bin Laden, and I'm told that the demon will change from time to time, and I, I'm sure we'll have some surprise later on when I show you some more slides. But here's another one where you can clearly see here's the buffalo demon with his neck, you know, from his neck comes out the demon, uh, comes out the man in an anthropomorphic form with his horns, and uh, she is on her vahan on her vehicle that is the tiger and fighting with him. Uh, then you find here, this is Simhavani. This is when she's not actually Mahisha Surmardani, but she is Durga seated on her lion. But as you can see in a very bold posture, uh, bare chested and also with her legs apart, which itself tells a lot of things about the kind of goddess that she is, probably representing tribal areas or toughness areas where women were very different from the elite areas. Here's another one of her. Here's another one. This is a very virile way of standing. You usually see male gods standing like this, like Varaha. And uh, to find a goddess standing like this is really truly delightful. And of course, his head is up looking at her. He's almost kind of pathetic, like he's looking at her for mercy. And here she is again. And here she is again. You see her as directly with the buffalo, probably earlier, 5th century. This is also an earlier one, probably 5th century. 
in Ajanta. Um, there she is again. This is again a more modern day one from one of the pandals, one of the you know celebrations in October that we have in Delhi and around Delhi and Calcutta and you know Bengal. And you can see her; she's totally, completely clad. But I have to say, hair always plays a very important role in uh, in cultures and especially ancient cultures and in India. So the fact that you see that her hair is open is very telling. She doesn't really care for being bound down in any way, and that includes her hair uh, being open like that. Here she is in that same Vida pose that I told you about earlier. Now, this is one of my favorite reliefs. It's a relief in Mahabalipuram in Tamil Nadu. And as you can see, she's sitting astride her vahan, which is delightful because uh, you know normally they don't uh, want to show her sitting astride because that's unladylike to have her legs apart. But this is very nice that in the Pallav period, that is circa 6th century, 7th century, we have this image of her sitting in the proper way, which looks like a comfortable way to sit, to uh, be in a battle rather than sitting side saddle. And there you find the sad looking, almost sad, looking, a stunned looking face of Mahisha, who is uh, a, a much larger size in dimension, not like her, but she has all her gunners around her helping her, and he's there with his generals as well. This is a very small piece in the Metropolitan Museum in New York, and it's a very beautiful, as you can see, the beautiful calm look on her face as she is killing the demon. It's a small piece, it's from the Pala dynasty, and it is dated around 11th century. One of the most beautiful small pieces. I mean, even though it's so small, it just captures all the movement with all her hands there, with all the weapons, and the head of the buffalo decapitated there. Uh, very, very uh, beautiful image. Considered a very beautiful image. Next we have, again, her, uh, as you can see. I don't have time to go over every one of them, but this is also a slightly earlier one, 400, 401 BC, as you can see, it's roughly made. And there is always, we find a development in certain images that were earlier, that was around the Kushan times, like circa first, second century CE, we find that she's holding onto the neck and she's also sometimes pulling out the tongue and capturing him. And then we start finding when we come towards the Gupta period, she starts holding on to the hind legs. And then she eventually you're going to find she's not going to touch him at all. Okay, her hands are not going to play any role. It's just going to be a decapitation and her foot will be on his head. Like that's what we're coming to right now, story. Um, sorry, yeah, that one, yeah. Here's another one from Alampur in Andhra Pradesh. Kalashnath in Pallava period. Pala period, Pala. A very basic looking one, as you can see. Uh, we can see just four hands and the super and the you know crouching buffalo. It's also one of the earlier ones. Ajanta, this is also around fourth century, slightly earlier. And this is what I wanted to tell you about. So this is what has really totally surprised me. I like coincidences happen. This came to me just today and she is called coronavirus Mardani. So she is to remove coronavirus for us. And as you can see, she has also got her hand on the virus image itself. She's got it on, like she holds onto the head of Mahisha. She's holding onto the head over here, an artist rendition of Mardani as removing coronavirus, the biggest demon that we all are grappling with right now. And uh, I was just surprised that it came to me this evening or oh, what a coincidence. Thank you, thank you very much for your kindness. Thank you.